mix bus. It can be considered the most important part of any mix for a mixer. As the saying goes, you live and die by what you put on your mix bus. And for years, I mimicked what I read and saw as the staple go-to chains for a mix bus. But I was always left feeling devastated that my mixes just didn't have the same energy as the mixes I had loved. So I went on a quest to figure out what tricks the pros were using on their mix buses that I wasn't. And what I found were some not so traditional ways some of the pros I admired were using their mix bus to enhance their mixes. And in this video, I'm gonna share what these sneaky mix bus tricks are, including some that utilize a technique that actually borrows from a process that some mastering engineers use themselves. Now get ready to add some excitement and width to your mixes with this first subtle mix bus trick. Eric Valentine, the mixer behind artists like Weezer and Good Charlotte swears by it. And the best part, it's one of the simplest mix bus tricks out there that anyone can start using right away to set themselves ahead of the competition. Papa Valentine loves to kick off his mix chain with an instance of wave center and then automate the sides to increase by half a dB on the choruses and sometimes bridges. This little boost increases the width of the track and gives the listener a rush of excitement. It's seriously so freaking simple. And no one likes to keep things as simple as the lore of the mix, Chris Lord Algae. CLA is famously known for boasting about using his beloved Focusrite Red 3 compressor on his mix bus in every mix. But when I studied CLA's workflow like I was prepping for the SATs, I discovered something surprising. Turns out there are a few other compressors that CLA likes to use at the mix bus stage. In fact, on his own mix down plugin, there are two different compression flavors to choose from. Flavor one is the classic CLA Red 3 sound we all know and love. But Flavor 2 is the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor that CLA uses on slower tempo songs or dance style tracks. But wait, there's more. I am very, very sneaky, sir. I see that. CLA also has two sneaky compressors up his sleeve. One is an SSL VCA style compressor that lives in his rack right below his Red 3, and the other is the SSL Jeepcon compressor on his SSL console. In a breakdown of his mix on Muse's Survival, CLA let it slip that the band felt like something was missing. Muse wanted a more in-your-face rock mix that would have the listener transport themselves to an imagined seeing the band live. So CLA pulled out one of his tricks and combined the SSL Jeepcom compressor on the desk with his trusty Red 3 compressor to get a more upfront mix. And by combining these two compressors, it helped give the mix a more in-your-face rock angst sound that Muse was looking for. Muse was happy, and most importantly, CLA was happy. We got hits. So you can't mess with us. Anyway, that's how we operate here. Now get ready to mix like a boss with this next sneaky trick from the mastermind behind bands like Lamb of God and Every Time I Die, Machine the Producer. And the best part, it's easy peasy, thanks to the flexibility of mixing in the box. But beware, if your mix isn't already well balanced, EQ'd and compressed, this won't fix any of those pre-existing problems. In fact, it's gonna make them worse. <clears throat> What's wrong with you? I'm sick. I don't know why. Have you considered the 60 inch diameter cookie you're reading? <laughs> How can something that's delicious make me sick? In an interview, Machine shared how he was trying to figure out how one of the mastering engineers that he had been working with was able to get his master so loud without losing the punch or transient material in the mix that some other mastering engineers were destroying just a little bit when trying to get the master as loud and competitive as possible. The mastering engineer shared with Machine the routing setup that allowed him to maintain the punch and mixes that he was sent to master, which Machine found absolutely brilliant and has since incorporated into his mixing as now a staple of Machine's mix bus processing. What the mastering engineer had told Machine was the secret of him being able to maintain as much transient information as possible was using stems for mastering instead of the stereo mix. Wait, 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 hold up, John. How is stem mastering going to help me with mix bus processing? See, this setup allowed the mastering engineer to route drums, vocals, snares, or anything outside of the standard mastering chain to reintroduce more of the natural transients and dynamics of those instruments. Free your mind. Machine's mix bus is now a two-part process. First, there's a standard mix bus with processing where all the instruments get sent to. And second, there's another stereo aux channel with no processing running in parallel. Both of these stereo channels are then sent to a final master output with no processing. Once Machine has mixed a song to about 80 to 90% of where he wants it to be, he'll send various instruments to the outside mix bus and automate the send based on the needs of the mix for any given part of the song. That's the secret, an inside-outside mastering chain that Machine made his own. Holy crap. Pretty sick, right? Parallel processing isn't just for squashing drum buses anymore. Now hold on to your mixing desks. You'll love this sneaky mix bus trick 
from Grammy-winning mixer Tony Maserati, who's worked with artists like Tom Morello and Weezer, and has his own line of plugins as well. Needless to say, Tony knows a thing or two about making a mix pop. Simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellent. Tony has an exciting way to utilize the power of parallel processing on the mix bus and add something I think all mixers always want in their mixes, weight and width. In Tony's mix template, the entire mix gets summed to a single stereo bus signal, and that signal is split into one mix bus that has Tony's typical mix bus processing, but the magic lies in the parallel mix bus signal that the mix is sent to that has an instance of Brainworks BX Digital V3 or Waves S1, which is adding stereo width followed by a vintage RS-124 compressor, like Waves RS-124. There is a limiter at the end of this parallel chain as well, to serve as an insurance that the signal doesn't push the final master output a little bit too hot. Tony then blends the parallel track, which adds more weight and width, and he'll automate it on as an as-needed basis, instead of just having it on statically the entire time. Nice. This one is such a great and sneaky way to get your mixes even bigger, and will have the competition asking themselves, How does he do? I bet your brain has probably exploded with these mix bus tricks that showcase exciting ways pros think outside the box to get the results that keep their artists and fans listening to their songs over and over again. And you'll probably want to know what other tricks the pros use in their mixes that give them a competitive edge, which is why you'll want to watch this video right here for some sneaky tricks the pros use to hook listeners.